I thought I was going to pull my hair out when, wait. I thought I was going to rip my scalp off trying to build my first Webflow website. You see, I thought it was going to be kind of easy-ish, kind of like not too much more difficult than Figma. And holy shit, was I wrong. It was quite a bit more difficult than learning Figma. And because of its steep learning curve, it, the original deadline that I set for this client project ended up being three to four weeks uh, behind the deadline that I was able to submit it to the client. I will say though, even though Webflow is difficult to learn, I have found it to be a very rewarding process and uh, I definitely am want to try to make more websites with it as I go forward. And so in this video, what I wanna do is go over the website that I designed for this client and go over some of the obstacles that I faced when designing it, especially as someone who has quite a bit of knowledge with Figma, but no knowledge of Webflow whatsoever. All right, so the client that I've been working with is a physical therapist. He wanted a marketing website done for his PT business. And so that's what I've been working on in Webflow. Now I've already handed this off to him and it looks like he's been dabbling in some changes on his own. Like it, he's changed the color from what I originally had in Figma. Totally fine there. Um, so yeah, I figured I would just go through this and talk about different obstacles that I had along the way. Cause like I said, I'm very much used to working in Figma here, but not so much in Webflow. So the nav bar, luckily Webflow already has uh, an element for nav bar down here. So that was pretty easy to set up for the most part. I made this marketing website, just a one page website. So basically um, this services, the about section, those are just sections of this web page, and even the button here and here, those go to the the contact form, which is on the bottom of the page, which I'll get to. But yeah, I would say like one of the big things that is really difficult with well, one of the things that's difficult with Webflow is just the fact that their their nomenclature is just different from what I'm used to seeing. So, uh, for example, here. Um, if you look at like the spacing of Figma here, you can sort of set the space between elements here. And so a lot of times with uh, Webflow, you sort of set that for the individual elements, which is sort of an interesting difference there. And so I had to get used to that. Um, now this isn't in Flexbox mode, but if it was in Flexbox mode, which I don't know if this will, uh, it's already in a grid, so I can't do that. But there is a way where you can set um, elements in between each other at specified increments. Uh, it just uses the terminology called gap. Um, and so that's something that I had to get used to. The other thing that I had to get used to was classes. And so those are over here. And look, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not an expert in this stuff, but the way that I gather classes are is they're kind of similar to how you would label a, a auto layout frame or, um, or just a frame in general. So it's just a way to keep things organized, but it's also a way to keep stylings. So like, for example, uh, I have this um, not so greatly named grid two. So basically if I imported a, another grid, I can type in grid two and then this same layout will occur. Um, from what I understand, I don't think the content necessarily transfers over in a class. It just, it's just the styling. So it would be this two column setup with the set height here. Um, so I think that's pretty much how classes work. So getting used to that was definitely difficult. If we go down, we have the services section. This was fairly easy. Um, the other thing is that uh, frames in Figma, all right, so frames like this or frames this container here, the, I called them containers in Figma and, and Webflow, they're called div, uh, what are they called? Div boxes, yeah, div, div blocks. And so just getting used to that um, nomenclature. So anytime I had to group something, I'd have to put in a div block. And so that's pretty much how I would group things there. I mean, if you're used to Webflow, this is probably like super basic, but this is all like, coming from Figma. This is all stuff that is brand new to me. So getting used to all this stuff was difficult. 
Um, one other thing that I had to get used to was using grids. So grids are really awesome in Webflow. It's not something that I think Figma has. Like if I wanted to set up a grid system, I think I would just have to set up like three auto layout columns and, and then make um, another set of columns underneath to make a row. But this, like you can easily add a row here and I can add other uh, div blocks here to add sections of content. I can get rid of that row. And you can even like change the, the width. So if I wanted this to be like double the width, if I really wanted to emphasize it, I can do that. And um, so yeah, there's a lot of flexibility when it comes to grids. And so I've been learning about that a lot with the Webflow courses. And uh, so yeah, that was something else I had to get used to here. And so this is just the About Me section. And um, again, I just I actually got this concept from a book called Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. So basically have a primary call to action, uh, primary call to action in every other section of the web page, just so that people always have some sort of action to take. And so I've sort of implemented that in this website. I have a testimonial sort of slider here. Um, so that kind of works to just slide over to different testimonials there. I have a, this actually was a pricing section, but I changed it to be a sort of benefits, like why choose us. Um, so just kind of highlighting why someone might want to choose this company as opposed to others here. I had to basically build all of this from scratch from what I had in this Figma thing. Like there's no, even though there's a Webflow or Figma to Webflow uh, app or not app, what am I trying to say, plugin, I didn't use that because I don't think it would work with this anyway. All right, so moving on, this was a bitch to make, the frequently asked questions, I, I tell you. And I'll be honest, it still doesn't work totally right. So with this, like obviously you don't want the answers to be displayed automatically. So you have to like build out a, um, you have to build out like this automation here to where it opens the accordion and closes the accordion. So it basically looks like so. Um, the only problem is, is that I once I open it once, it doesn't seem to want to do it again. So I'm not really sure uh, what's going on there. Um, yeah, don't know what to do. So that's the frequently asked questions. And then this is sort of the main thing, the main where the main call to action takes you, which is the contact page. Um, this was mostly simple to set up. Webflow, I think, has like a form. They have uh, form buttons here, uh, or what am I trying to say? Form elements here that you can use to pretty much quickly build a form. And so that's nice. Um, and then building the, uh, the footer here. This one actually does have the logo. So he kept the logo for that and removed it for the top, but that's fine. Um, so yeah, this is the, this is the web page. And um, there was definitely, like I said, there was a lot of things that I had to learn that just were very different than how I would design something in Figma, but it's been a really cool learning process. And I had to make this responsive. So like here it is in tablet form. Um, I had to change, this doesn't look totally great, but it, I might have to remove some of the uh, margin there. And, but most, mostly it is responsive at, to a good degree here. And then this is uh, horizontal, mobile, and this, I moved this to a one column, or I'm, uh, yeah, one column display. And then finally the, uh, Vertical. Now he changed this to text, so it, it's fucking up the heading here. Um, but when it was a logo, they were in line with each other. And then, yeah, this is just sort of what it looks like in mobile, which I think it looks pretty good for the most part. Everything seems to translate pretty well. And so that is the website that I've been building for the past few weeks on Webflow. So yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with how the site turned out. I think there's definitely room for improvement. Like I mentioned in the walkthrough I just did, it's not perfect by any stretch, but for a first attempt, it's, it's okay. Um, I will say the client seems to like it. I asked him if he would be willing to do a video testimonial. And the reason I asked for a video testimonial is it can be very easy to fake 
text te testimonials or written testimonials, um, but he was not amenable to that, but he was willing to do a, a written testimonial. So at least I will have some sort of, um, some sort something to build authority with putting this on my portfolio. On a side note, I've been getting a lot of comments and messages saying that as a designer, I should be using Framer as opposed to Webflow because apparently the interface of Framer is a lot similar to Figma and the transition from Figma to Framer is just a lot easier than the transition from Figma to Webflow. And I don't disagree with that. Like I've looked at Framer, I've sort of, I've down, or not downloaded it, but I've uh, went to their website and signed up and sort of looked through it a little bit. And it does look a lot easier to tackle than Webflow does. But at this point, uh, I'm just so deep in the weeds of Webflow that I'm just enjoying learning about it now. And I think the other thing that's rewarding about it is just the fact that as I go through and, and take the Webflow courses, which by the way are phenomenal, um, Webflow has some of the best courses I have ever seen put out for free. Like they could easily charge hundreds of dollars for that. Not that I want them to, please keep them free. But I will say that by learning Webflow, I feel like I'm getting a somewhat better grasp on just coding behavior, which I think is really helpful going forward. So yeah, it's not to say that I won't try Framer in the future, but for now, I think I'd rather just stick with Webflow and just see what how much proficiency I can gain with that. And so yeah, my plan now is to try to work on my second freelance project. Um, so I got probably close to 20 people that requested a me to uh, build a marketing website for them. Uh, if you wanna know how I did that, you can check out this video here. But my plan is to pick from one of the people that have submitted a, uh, f a questionnaire form talking about their business. That's sort of how I weed out the people who actually are serious about this versus the people who just kinda want a website. And so I want to work with my second uh, client, again, for free. My goal is to work with three clients for free and get testimonials from each of them just to build authority so that when people go to my portfolio, they can see that I have, you know, multiple uh, website projects with people giving good reviews about them, or at least hopefully good reviews. And my challenge with this or that I'm giving myself for the second project is I want to get better with doing Webflow animations. The one thing that I feel like was a little bit bland with my first project is just there wasn't a lot of dynamic uh, eye candy with it. There, like a lot of modern websites now have transitions and while I feel sometimes they can be overdone, I think they can also be tastefully done. And I would like to get better at doing that. And so that will be my challenge to myself for this second freelance project. And I'll be sure to keep you in the loop as I go forward with that. But yeah, if you've been getting any value from these videos that I've been putting out, I do have a quick favor. If you could hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, that would mean a lot and it would help me out a great deal. And also, if you are interested of, in joining a community of like-minded designers who are trying to either get into the UX design industry or just level up in the UX design industry, I recently created a Discord server called The Designer's Den. And so you can check that out in the link below if you wanna join that community. It's a, I think it's a pretty cool group. And so anyway, uh, that is it for this video. And until next time, I will see you in the next one. Take care.